Welcome back to another Plan 6 Pack video. Welcome to part 2 of TR6 Wiring Harness. So, what I've done is I've fed the wiring harness through. So, as you can see, it's coming from the front there. Run, well, I don't know if you can see it. It's running around. There's all the loose wires all over there. And I have run it through the back. Now, just a few notes to make, actually, just while you can still see it, is that um, the glove box, or the rear, the door here, this one usually comes, sometimes it comes blank because it depends what you're using. Uh, some use different switches for this. The early models, the really early models, because this were the same one, use like the glove box style. Actually use that in the door and not the one that you can buy now. So that's why you don't put this on it because you don't know what head you're using. Uh, as you can see the way it is, the way the wire runs at the back, you can see it feeds through. The washer wiper comes through. There's the one for the uh, starter and all that and so what i've done is i bunched it and now the heater has to go in but you can see the way the wiring harness runs the next part of the loom that sticks out is all the middle all the middle gauges the next part of the loom that sticks out is all the top and so on and so forth so when you actually put it in when you stretch it out it's actually not that bad it actually sort of self tells you what's where you just have to figure out which ones are which and of course being the brand new harness i don't know why but all the middle lights all come with push fit just remember that when you go to change it all right let's get cracking so in this video we're going to do it again just a quick video so, somebody's not watching the whole video for something small you need to do. So, on this one, we're basically going to start from the front and work our way around. So, uh, here's the furthest point. And again, this is for an early one. So, I know a lot of, uh, if you have a late one, you may have the uh, anti-spark and you have uh, different ones for that. But again, this is an early one. So, the end of our wiring harness, the very end of it, we should have a purple, black, and a purple. They're both for your horns. So, it doesn't make a difference which side it goes on, as long as one's on one side and one's on the other. Um, there's a possibility maybe the horn is particular that it is a positive one side and negative the other just double check your horn just to make sure for that but for most things it's usually once power goes in one side and comes out the other that's what that's what triggers it after that then we have uh, a few wires left over so we have a solid red we have a green white and we have a black solid red is the one that will now power because we need a double for that and now that will power your side lamp markers and it'll also run your so make sure the phone is still around and it will run your front marker as well so hopefully you can see this and i wasn't in the way oh, i'll just you know i'll just take it and show you It'll be easier okay let's go back to this again so here's the end of our wiring harness so we have a double black here that's obviously for your ground straps so there's a ground strap that comes from your uh, side light marker because that's a simple red and black. And then you have a ground for, what is the ground in here? Now I'm getting lost here for a second. Um, something else goes ground and I can't think of what it is. Here we here, we have a green and white, red, and we have a black. So the front here has a green and it has a red. The red is just your constant power, so that will go to red to red, which is pretty straightforward. And then the other red will connect as well, so that's why we need a double, connect all the three reds together. The green will go to your green white, because that's your uh, indicator. And then the, uh, where the headlights are in here. Black goes to black, which is pretty obvious. And then we have our headlights. The headlights are pretty straightforward again. You have a blue, blue, red, and a, sorry, black, blue, white, blue, red. Black is ground, pretty straightforward, and you have blue, white, and blue, red. That's the difference between high beam and dipped headlights, or low beam, whatever you want to call it. Um, so they're pretty straightforward. So let's start connecting these together. Whoop. Hopefully it's not, I'm not too low here. So the, the ground on this obviously comes with a, with a double in it. So I'm grounding it now under here. That's the headlight. And then the side marker light is a ground as well. I'm not going here as well. Now what you don't get in the wiring harness is a lot of the, uh, the connectors. So you have to go dig for them. Now I just took a double off. I'm going to put it over here. 
So you may need to get some or uh, pull them off your old harness. So. And again, I suppose I should do it, um, but I'm just going to go through the wire now. It's always a good time now to clean these and make sure to make sure you get a good connection. So two reds. And a red. Now we're going to join the green, green white, with uh, basically the solid green here. Theoretically, you should have made a green white, but you just make a green. You just, I don't know. Uh, single connector. I thought I had a single connector there. Here, I'm going to connector. What do we have for the headlights now? The headlights all need connectors as well. So, green white, the green white, looking up, they're still on the old part of the harness. Blue, oh, sorry, green white. Blue white. Anybody notice that? Blue white to blue white, blue white to blue red to blue red. So, all I've left is a wound black. For a ground, which I'm not sure why the extra one is there, but I suppose nah, depends on what you have here. So all I have to do left on this one is just connect the um, green to the light green. So what I can do is just to make sure this is okay, I'll probably end up putting the just to make sure there's nothing else left to be connected, because um, some of them have like the anti run or the anti spark or whatever, and you need another ground. Um, I just put it to the body. I'll just put an extra clip onto it and I'll actually strap it to the body. All right, so that's that part done. Let's come around. Now, the next part you see is, let me get to the middle. The middle does have a ground strap that's meant to actually connect to the body, this one here. However, the one that on this body was broken so as you can see, I made my own little strap and put a spade connector on it, so I can connect it. Hopefully we can do this one-handed. There you go. So it's the same thing. It's a little spade that's normally sticking, I believe, on the bottom half. And that's where this ground strap goes to. Now, what do we have on here? We're basically repeating ourselves. So we have the, the double in the um, blue reds, blue whites, and the blacks and again we're going to join them together and we have our horns again it's not oh, the ball's in the way i'm not aware of horns that are usually preferenced however it doesn't make a difference just So I'm trying to do this one hand as I'm trying to hold the phone at the same time, which is the camera. Oh. Okay, that's the horn connected. All right, so again, the same thing in here, the front. Red is just the solid power, green is your uh, indicator lamp. Um, I may do a video on this that I'll show you because sometimes these can be backwards. When I say backwards is that people have struggled with the lamps being, like the tail lamps being too bright and then the brake light is dull because the unit in here, these wires go in and sit on a flat plate and they're just soldered onto it. And that flat plate can actually, is a, has a spring. So there's the plate, the spring and the back of the unit. And uh, what happens is, is that if it's if it's pushed out far enough, you can actually rotate it and push it back in. So you actually, when you put the bulb in, you realize you get the wrong side of the bulb. And I say the twin film bulbs, you have one uh, low and one high density, if you want to call that. And if they're reversed, then you'll find out and you can't figure out why one is brighter than the other. Sometimes it's just the unit, the word it's gotten in. And I had a midget in here and that's why they had, this, they had the same problem. The uh, somebody had put them in and basically just put like screws on the back of it for whatever reason, and uh, but when it popped out, it spun 180 and went back in. So when I put the bulb in, it was bright one side and dull the other. So it just sort of 
you know, sort of cancels each other. So just be mindful of that. Which side? So when you put the bulb in, you test them. Make sure, especially for the brake, that the dull end, well, the, the bulb should be dullest when just the tail lights are on and brighter on the brake light. So I believe the dull, funny enough, is the long film and the brighter is the short one. But some bulbs may vary, I don't know. Um, so just be mindful of that when you're doing that. Uh, so again, down here, the side light marker, again, solid red, black, solid red, black, and the headlights. So let me uh, put the phone back up and I'll connect them again. Whoop. I'm trying not to hit the stop button. The last thing I want to do is hit the stop button right now. Now, sorry if I get in the way. Now, this one's black and there's a single one on it. So I can rub that and put it back over the far side. The light on the far side is missing a ground strap. So I may have to come back to that. I forgot. There's the two, the red, the green, and the back is like a bullet connector. And it's a, the bullet connector wraps around. I know. <laughs> the bullet connector on the back of the unit is like a little metal bar that goes around and it clamps around. So when you put the bullet connector in, it squeeze it, and then that's your ground strap for the unit. So that's what's missing out of the far one. That's why I have one extra uh, black ground. Lucky enough on this side, I think I have enough spots to actually put that in. So that's in, that's in, that's in. Now we just have to connect the green. And you'll find that the doubles where the this end or the, the driver's side, you always get the extra the double actually, the double units actually come on the wiring harness when you get them. Um, and again, if you look for wiring harness, we supply them here at Plan 6 Parks. Um, it comes with them, but just the singles don't. They never come with just the singles. Very rare, do they? Um, because you just keep them off the ones. Uh, so for now, I think I'm short one over here. Okay. So. They're all connected, and like I said, all I do now is put a ground strap to the front one, but I'll get back to them. Now, here comes the best part. Here comes the uh, the walking end of it. So, um, where do we start? Colour-wise. So, you always have the uh, the wiring diagrams. Uh, and again, they're here available at Plan 6 Parts if you ever need them. Um, like you see it's a nice big size, laminated. There is some flaws in these diagrams. Um, I have to look at your ones, but some of them, for example, and I said this in another video if you take note of it, is that um, it was the lights, one of the purples. It says, it showed one color by the writing, but it was actually shown purple. Um, it might be on the later model, actually. This is the early one, it might be on the later one. It was like coming off the ignition, whatever, going up, it was shown purple but the, the color the chart was showing a different color to what the letter one was um gonna put now i'm gonna look for that now <laughs> it's in here somewhere anyway we'll get back to that i'll have to look at the other ones i know one of them does have a flaw in it and it's on one of my other videos all right so uh when we come to this part of the harness again you'll find a lot of wires sticking out you'll find this section on the harness where these are all together these are the ones that are going to the alternator Alternator, alternator, ground strap. The best in the bed to do with this one is to ground strap it behind the coil. So take the uh, the nut out from the coil that holds the uh, the bracket on and ground the ground to the body as well, uh, the engine. Because it's always good to ground the engine and the gearbox as much as you can. Then we have two wires left over. The bolt and the sleeve, the ones we get here. 
you have a green with a light blue tracer and then you have a white with a brown tracer the green with the light blue is your water temperature sender uh, if you don't have the wiring harness you're not sure think of the blue tracer as water blue water and then your white with your brown goes to your oil pressure switch obviously for an early car it only runs one switch the one wire and not three wires so that's that one the last little small one the solid white is solid power this is the one that goes to your coil it goes to the positive side of the coil because the power goes into the positive side and gets shot out the negative side to the distributor in layman terms after that then we can just simply connect the uh Now just be mindful when you look at this one because uh, the alternator does say positive and negative and there is a brown for positive and a black for negative as well. So make sure you're on the right way around. That's not upside down. Put one before you actually do goes in first. So on this one, let me show you. Wearing harness you get here because everyone supplies different harnesses. If you look at the back of your alternator, you will see, and again, this is the early ones, you see a plus and a minus. So, if you want to make sure your brown's on the plus and your minus, this is the negative, and this is the strap that will go down here. Sorry, I'm zoomed in too far. I have it to go in here. Sorry if it's a bit blurry. Uh, the wearing harness, obviously, here as well, also has. Funny enough, this one locks into its other, locks into itself. So if you can, let me take this back out for a second. When the first one went in, the second one goes in the tree prong, and you can see there's an extra tab up here. So if you're not sure which way it goes, the little tab sits inside this and keeps it all in play. Locks it in, all right? From there, that's pretty much it. Uh, that strap, I may end up putting it on the opposite side. It shouldn't get in the way. But yeah, and again, a lot of people what they'll do is will uh, use a cable tie and cable tie this to stop it from getting sucked in or getting caught in your alternator. All right, fold the strap down. Um, somewhere down the end here, if you can see, you will find this one, which is the white with the little uh, black tracer. This is your sensor for your brake. So it's supposed to just sit in here and sit on top of that. And it goes. And that's it. Now, people ask, which side do you use? Theoretically, you can use any side. Um, my understanding, and don't hold me 100% to it, is that there's two of them because then you can run another wire if you have a different switch. However, the, the block connector you get to go in, it could be either side. Um, a lot of them fail because the switch is gone, or there's oil in there, which there is a lot of oil in there, so it might be a good connection, or the, little, uh, the sleeve inside there has uh, gotten stuck and it's ground anew. Anyway, that's your, your brake, so that's your low warning pressure. So when the brake pressure goes low, the cylinder will slide away and it'll ground out and it'll trigger the light to come on. Um, all right, so next one is this part here, and you can see there's a bit of an odd thing I've done here, all right? So this one's getting LED lights. So the original connection here is for a standard halogen, um, your hazard switch. So your main power is your purple with the with the purple with the red tracer and then that goes to your uh, green with the uh, slate and green with the purple. The green with the slate is the one that actually operates the lights itself and the, the green with the purple actually goes on up into the dash and has a ground and that's what actually uh, triggers the bulb. That was the bulb. Now the problem with this is though, if I look at the layout on this, if I look at the dead straight, it shows the load, which is the purple, on the left hand side so if I look at the wiring uh, diagram right if you look at that that seems fine right low to the left 
Um, there it is here, you can see it. Uh, light green purple goes to your bulb. That's the symbol for a bulb in the note. And there's a ground strap. So when the signal goes up, it comes out here and sends it both to the uh, relay, which when it turns, when it gets to the relay, it will send it down both of these. And also it sends the same signal to the bulb, which is grounded out, which lights, illuminates the bulb. So if you look at that on top and these two, the problem is though, I'm using an LED flasher. And as you can see on this one, it has your load and everything, but it has E, which is a ground strap. This ground strap is meant to be just grounded on its own to actually make the unit work. So what I've had to do is, as you can see, the wire comes out and I'll go just to a single strap. Whoop, it's flopping around on me here. And I gave myself enough room and that will just ground up to the body to ground to make the unit work. But what doesn't help as well is that the this one, the lettering on the back, the load is on the top actually. It's actually up here. When in this case, the load was on the side. So I couldn't even plug it, plug it in if I wanted it because then the load would be in the wrong spot. So what I've done was I've taken this little uh, harness that we've, we've had here and you can buy them in the stores and they'll work for the headlights as well, the same strap. And what I've done is the three black wires that have come out, I've kept the ground wire that it needs to be. So if I put on the right one, yep, yeah, sorry, it's the way I'm looking at it. So this one here, eased ground, then the B is now going to be the two greens. So you see I have the two of them connected together. So when the power comes in the load side, which is the purple, um, from here, I have it connected. And it's done to go down and it's connected to the load side of this relay, which is at the top. And then uh, the B is basically where it gets sent out. Not sure what the B stands for. I know L is load and B is, I don't know, break. I don't know. Well, I'm not sure actually what it stands for. But then that signal will get sent out and sent through the, the two wires. And then obviously, yeah, one will go to the uh, relay and then one will go to the bulb. So I've just made a little strapping just to do it. And I'll clean it up a bit. But just, I don't, not cutting any wires, especially a new one. I don't like doing that. So I create my own little harness and I'll ground that out and I'll tie all that up. Such a break. All right. Let's go to the next part, is we are gonna to go to our, I'd like to be to have the small one so you can actually see this. Um, we're gonna to go to our fuses. So what we're looking at is, here's a fuse box, it's quite simple. Three in, three out, all right? So you can put them in any order you want on one side, as long as the other side matches. So just start on one side, so it's a little irrelevant. Um, if we look at the harness, I'm going to again try to do this one-handed. Um, you sort of have the three colours, the way they pop out. Whoops, sorry. Um, this, the way the harness goes, it's easy to obviously put these this way, but in any order. So, let's say you start with the white at the bottom. I, said, I know the book, I know if you look at this one, it sort of shows this way. Which is fine, that could be the bottom. Like, that could be the bottom, walk your way up and you have to free them to the top. Again, it's a little irrelevant. It's just, a, it's, as long as you had the fuses are right, it's, it's a little irrelevant that way. It doesn't match up. So white, and then we'll start with our brown. And then we have our red green. Now here's one to know, right? We have, sorry, this is white. We have the double white, and then we have another single white as well. Okay? And if you look at it, it only actually shows you two whites. Where does the other one actually go? The white all run the same. The white all run off this, so I'd connect it in anyway. I know there's an extra white in there, and I might just power that one up. But I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little, uh, one room wide is an extra, an extra white. So it's also pretty thick. So what I need is I'll need a, a spade joiner. So what I need to do is I'll actually need to uh, put one of the spades that actually join the two of them together and actually put them on the one side. But let's say just for now it was connected. 
I'm gonna go back to it. Sorry, that's the brown. So you have the two browns and a single brown. Goes through this. What does this do? Uh, nothing. <laughs> what this is actually is pretty uh, is pretty much on the later models, the 73s. This unit is actually pretty much on the over here the, the strap. So when you're doing your um, battery, you'll notice the, the red strap and you have the browns that go in with the, uh, the white with the red tracer. That's the same thing as well. So what this is allowing you to do is because it's brown and it's solid power, it allows you to use, you have more spade so you can actually run an extra solid power off it. The thing is you don't get a fuse, but you can join it to it and like, let's say join a solid to this, through the fuse and then away you go. So it's just a power source if you will. Best way to describe that one. Um, all right, so now we have the uh, white in, and we're gonna match it up with the greens. Sorry. Oops. Sorry, the wires are down here. It might be easier to go the other way, but this is going to push this way. So, actually, do you know what? I'm going to swap them around. This looks like it's going to be tidier if I put these this side. So, I'll put green at the bottom because that's with the white. Then I'll put purple. And then red. Sorry, you couldn't see me doing that. Let me zoom in. So red, purple, white. And actually, funny enough, the other side is a double spaded, so I'm actually it actually works out to be okay. So double white, single white, and then to the purple goes the brown. And then red to red green. All right, so hopefully that looks okay. Um, the only one I'm not going to do the overdrive one yet, um, because I'm, to be honest, I'm looking at the relay and it's so these are so loose and crappy that I need to clean it and may need to replace it. All right. Here comes the next one, which is we have our ignition and we have our horn relay. So it has all our wires for it. Um, okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to get the overdrive out of the way because I have to go to the fuse box as well, actually. Uh, this wire here, you can follow. This one is pretty straightforward. This goes straight in and connects to the uh, wiper motor. I can only go in one way. Sorry, I know this is probably terrible just from the way I'm holding it. Camera. <clears throat> so it's shaped. So I'm gonna say you can only go one way. It is shaped, there's a small connection which is usually towards the firewall. There we go. Now, let's do this quick, and then we'll break, and then we'll start on the interior. So with the rest of our wires here. All right, so what we're looking at our relays is, here is our relay is here. So if you want to do the horn relay, we have a W2, W1, C2, and C1. So the, the double purple is gonna to go to C2, and then back to W1. So, let's see if we can read these, because I'm upside down. Oh, it's hard to see. Oh, C2. Yeah. And then C2. And do this thing, and then it goes to... W1. So where is that wire? Oh, 
Oh, looks like I'm missing some words here. Less than a few, actually. And uh, just a double purple. What do we have here? So I'm getting a little lost here now on the relays. Uh, sorry, this one's not the horn. This one here is for your uh, ignition. Sorry, these colors here for all the ignition end of it. So you're gonna go to uh, the two, the purple red. This is purple red. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong colors. It's gonna go to W1. And if you wonder where this is on the, uh, the book here, this here. So the purple red's about going to W1. So let's see if we can find it now. W1's up the top, that's pretty easy. And then we have the green white is C1. Green white. C1 must be at the bottom there. W2, C4, C2, no, C1 is at the top right. A bit of a stretch in the harness. All right, then the next one we have is the light green and K, which is, K is pink, which is this one. And that one's gonna go to C2, which should be right in the middle. Yep. Uh, ground strap is gonna go to W2, which I believe is underneath the purple. I believe it was underneath the purple. I'm gonna take it out it just to show. So all the wires getting in the way. It's hard to just see it there, but this says W2. Yep, W2. It's our ground. If you're not sure of these, remember always take a picture before you take them off. But again, can you guarantee they're in the right spot to begin with? That's the other thing. And then finally our green red. There's one spot left, and that's underneath the uh, this one and that's gonna go to C4 C4 all right that's it all right so there's our ignition and um these are the this is the relay that runs the, the um blah, 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 blah. the worst coming to me then this is your basically your your ignition relay all right so that's all these it runs the Signals. So your signals left and right and so on and so forth. Um, all right, so that's that one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I have a customer actually coming in for some stuff and they should be here right now. So I don't wanna start the video if I'm not gonna get it done in time. So the next thing we'll do then, as I said, we'll move on to the, uh, the horn relay and then we'll move on to the, uh, we'll switch, we'll clean that up and we'll move on to the um, overdrive one. So uh, that's it for now. And uh, yeah, all right. So next video, we'll move on to part three and we'll work our way on into the inside. So uh, see you in the next part.